welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Well, I'm looking at some irrigation pipes that we used on a test site for growing Timothy hay here at Shadrach Farms, uh, I, I think last year. And we saved it. And this year, I was thinking of trying to grow Timothy right here near my north fence because there's no, nothing else growing here besides weeds and some trees. So I'm out here with Everett who's going to discuss uh, what's the likelihood, it is November, of being able to get the irrigation in and plant before it gets uh, too cold and too wet. The irrigation so that we know that come springtime we can turn it on. Now there's going to be tree roots here and I don't know if they're going to interfere, but how deep do I have to go? Not sure. There's some shade. There's some sun. And when I grew Timothy Hay at another plot, uh, I, real I came to realize that uh, too much sun was not conducive. I am trying to get the planting of Timothy Hay down to something I can trust so that when I have a bigger plot, I will know what I want to do, how deep to go with the tiller, whether or not to stay away from tree roots, whether or not to do it in a place where there's a lot of sun. On this plot, I decided to plant a cover crop and use a seed mixture, which is described here. Well, this is our carrot plot this year. Same place. It, uh, the carrots grew very well here last year. My animals and we enjoyed the carrots for a long time. This year we planted as usual with the same irrigation system and uh, similar seed and something started eating the carrots as they emerged even though we used the same controls to keep the pests from getting our carrots. So this year we're trying this cover um, that we got locally here to see if the carrots can come up and survive whatever else is competing with us to get to them and to eat them. Well, Everett's trying to figure out what kind of material this is. I think it's called Eco Cover. Is it a netting or a plastic or both? It's like a very tight netting. A very tight netting. Okay. That's $42 worth you're looking at right now. Bought locally here. We'll give you an update as our carrots start to grow. We will plant a cover hay crop in this small test plot to further evaluate the probable success of planting a larger plot here. We've rototilled it. We're going to bring some of our organic compost, rototill that in, put some irrigation up for summertime. We're going to do it here too after we've moved, moved all this dirt and uh, some of this gravel that's been stored here. We're moving it presently in the next few days. And here it is December. By January I hope to be planted and I will keep uh, videoing our progress. December 9th, 2013. Here's our carrot plot with no crop cover material because it appears that the slugs uh, population is too high this season and uh, we don't want to put any kind of slug killing materials or uh, pellets down so instead we're going to maybe replant if we don't get any carrots at all from our planting this fall and winter replant in the spring according to articles on Google I have been able to determine that the slug population is much higher this time of year and so rather than fighting them, we'll try to coexist with them and plant when they don't need to eat our carrots. Now, Aniel and Derek are going to explain to you what all they've done to get to this point and what they're doing over there to get to that point. You see where the shovels are. 
They have to do a little handwork there. Okay, and Yael, you first say what you did here to get us to this point. It looks good. Okay. Um, this part started out looking like, I don't know if you can see that over there, just kind of grassy area. So first I um, just rototilled it um, with this one over here. That is an ancient, <laughs> before ancient, 1950s, yeah. but it still works. And if I wanted to, I could make it look really new. There are a lot of antique trackers on RFD TV that are going for thousands. But, you know, you want to make them, make them look really new. So and we might want to do that. It yeah. works great. Um, so I went over it twice because uh, the ground was pretty hard. It took a couple tries to get it all mixed up. And then I brought over a bunch of compost manure and spread it out by hand and then rototilled that in. Yes. And then I spread out the seed. Um, actually, I watered it before I spread out the seed because the ground over here was really dry. And then covered it with the nitrogen shavings. Okay, nitrogen shavings, which I get from my nearby garden supply and we keep it piled up over there beyond that uh, garage. Okay, now over here, Derek, if you'd explain what we had to do here, because this was a kind of a storage site for dirt and gravel. Let's explain what you've done and what you're yet going to do. Yeah, well it started out as a big pile of dirt and gravel that uh, I had to use the Kubota trailer to move over to the other property. Kubota tractor, yeah, and yeah. that's a diesel tractor with a nice bucket, okay. And then after moving a whole ton of dirt, uh, me and Aniel, we flattened the, uh, flattened the rest of it with shovels and then uh, she rototilled it up and uh, I brought the rest of the compost that's laying on top of it. Okay, and this is organic compost from my livestock here at Shadrack Farms. Okay, and so you guys are going to take a break now and then uh, spread it out later? Yeah. Okay, we're not in a rush. Well, here's the next session. A few days later, we're having a drought here in California, so even though it's December and winter is starting officially on Saturday, we're installing our irrigation. We'll, we can easily turn it off if uh, it starts raining. So this is the white PVC that we used uh, a year or two ago at another small plot and we're hooking it up to a timer on our well water. That's all for today. Sonia Soklo, the urban cowgirl and the urban farmer. Photo showing progress January 1, 2014. Photo showing progress January 7, 2014. Photo showing progress January 14, 2014. Video showing progress January 19, 2014. Today is March 5th, only a couple weeks away from spring. It's doing much better now. We've had quite a bit of rain and yet some sun. Today is sunny as well. Now the question is, can we grow a quarter acre, a half acre, an acre somewhere here? Um, or can we lease some land or can we buy some land elsewhere and do some soil testing? As I walk around here, I'm going to show you the rest of the site, which is doing very well on the east side. Uh, we even uh, should be mowing it because perhaps it gets more afternoon sun, but definitely at first it got more water. No problems here. You're looking at what might be my next Timothy Hay test plot. It is a backyard that's used only by uh, one of my rescue dogs because she likes to uh, come out here and investigate. Um, and it is covered right now with creeping buttercup. About a month ago it was covered with nothing. It was just dirt. Um, there is a hose spigot here, but um, there's no watering going on. Uh, then all of a sudden the creeping buttercup showed up and the, the little yellow flowers and I investigated and identified what it was. I've studied how to remove it because it would definitely be competing to my Timothy Hay plot. 
uh, and uh, I've been in touch with Arbico to see if there are any organic materials chemicals I can use and there is a vinegar like chemical that I can use but it might require several applications here is what I've tentatively decided to do I do have a rototiller on a small garden tractor uh, I'm going to till it about two or three inches down and I'm going to set up the irrigation here that I have used in my other test plots. It's like a portable PVC irrigation system. Watch for the buttercup to reemerge. Um, treat the reemerging buttercup with this vinegar like solution that I can get from Arbico and monitor my irrigation, my moisture in my soil here. Uh, I hope with the help of this. This is an MS, MSU pushes riser plan for efficient crop irrigation. I saw this MSU program on RFD TV in the last couple weeks several times. I contacted the person who whose number is provided in this article. He called me back this morning. He's took my identifying information for communication and said he would have a local dealer um, get in touch with me. I told him I wanted to buy one riser and I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. I don't know how much it is, but what it is is like, it's almost like a soil probe, only it's designed to tell you how your soil is doing as far as moisture content goes. We are in a tremendously terrible drought here in California. I have a wonderful well that I use for irrigation. I've had no problems with it. But here in this test plot, not only do I want to see if I can grow Timothy hay here again without having competing cover crops or weeds emerging, but I want to see if I can monitor my irrigation system here so that I make sure I have not too much, not too little water in this small plot, which is about a thousand square feet. So that's my plan. I'm giving you an idea what it is in a very brief video filming today, and I'm doing the filming myself. I'm going to keep you up to date uh, on what I'm doing as, quote, a beginning farmer to grow organic Timothy hay at Shadrach Farms here in California. That's all for today, and today is March 18th, 2014. And there's my little rescue dog that loves to come down here. Well, here we are in the yard where we're going to plant, one of these days we hope soon, some Timothy hay seed. I'm getting a new sack, but we've, we're preparing it. Uh, we have removed all of the buttercup. We have removed all of the leaves. We have removed some low hanging branches. And now we're starting to rototill. And that is kind of a choice I had to make. Will we rototill or will we aerate? Well, since I haven't done anything to this yard in years, uh, I have no idea what the soil is like. How, how compact it is down below. So we're just going to make the choice to rototill now and then maybe aerate in the future. And then another choice I have to make is, do I want to plant a cover crop here? I had a really good cover crop going um, over there by my auto gate, and I've shown you some scenes of that. It grew in just a few months. And uh, we're going to move that irrigation system over here and decide whether we want to plant that cover crop here in this yard and then be ready to maybe plant some Timothy hay seed in September. Choices, choices, choices. In the meantime, the yard is being used for my dogs. That's uh, Lulu. And there's my rescue dog, Bits. So we're continuing to use the yard 
even after I seed, I'll allow the dogs to be on here. I don't expect them to do any damage. And I'll keep you informed with video and photos what's going on here in our relentless effort to get some organic Timothy hay planted again here in 2014 at Shadrach Farms. Well, we are raking flat the ground because... Uh, the rototiller made a bunch of clumps. Luckily, we had uh, we had rain the last couple days, so everything is smooth. And Derek is just using a uh, rake to get the ground ready for planting. Now, I can't plant my Timothy until September. So, what I'm going to do is plant the grass seed that I planted as a cover crop elsewhere on my property near my automatic front gate is it grew very well it grew very quickly and then I have to decide how I'm going to at the end of the summer deal with it should I just weed whack it and plant the Timothy do I have to rototill it in again should I aerate it um, when I study Google and when I watch RFT TV I'm not getting clear answers on um, which cover crop should be handled which way in order to prepare the ground for the crop you actually wanted to plant. So that's all for today, Sonia Sokolo, the urban cowgirl. And by the way, my dogs, my little rescue dog is out there digging holes all the time. So when I do plant the cover crop, I have to decide whether or not uh, I care if she goes down there and digs holes. And she enjoys it so much, I probably... We'll let her down there, but I just have to wait and see. One tiny baby step at a time. Today is April 3rd, 2014. We have tilled, roto-tilled this yard. You can see my same rescue dog comes out here and enjoys it. Tilled or not, we have seeded it with a, with a cover crop. We are going to be bringing the portable irrigation system here that we used to use near my front gate in the Timothy Hay uh, plot there that has a cover crop. As time permits, we may um, till that cover crop in and plant Timothy Hay there. But for now, I'm trying to get ready to plant a test plot here in September. I can't even get the Timothy Hay seed at this time. Uh, it has to be closer to the end of the summer that my seed man finds it uh, for me, a whole sack full. It's very expensive, but I'm doing my best to here at Shadrach Farms, a small farm, in an urban rural setting, a small business, and I want to, one tiny baby step at a time, increase my business by, among other things, planting organic Timothy hay on my own property for selling and for using for my own livestock. We will keep you informed on how things go here um, in this other small test plot, but uh, I can tell you that the gophers or the ground squirrels are starting to make holes the seed has not germinated yet. No rain, substantial rain predicted for at least the next 10 days. So that's it. That's my progress report today. A small business, Shadrack Farms, who is trying to organically grow Timothy Hay. And at the same time, I am trying to get some grant funding to help me do this because the Agricultural Act of 2014 has been passed. I just have to find the correct request for proposal RFP that works for my parameters. And it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time to wade through the paperwork and to reach the proper people who can answer my questions. But I'm doing it, and I'm doing it one small step at a time. Well, how can a small business on a small farm in an urban rural setting go on the roadmap to profitability doing farming? 
This is a small backyard at Shadrack Farms that wasn't used for anything else besides little doggies running around when they felt like being outside. We are going to try to farm Timothy hay in this backyard using inexpensive irrigation equipment made from PVC hoses and we might get an aerometer I-R-R-O-M-E-T-E-R -E -E to try it out. It's a technological way to measure uh, how deep the irrigation is getting. Now the Timothy hay can't be planted here until uh, September, the preferred time for planting Timothy. The Timothy hay will be planted organically. No herbicides will be used. We did till. We did rototill this yard because it hadn't had anything but weeds for quite a while. And it was overrun with buttercups. So we weed whacked the buttercup and then tilled the ground, oh, about three inches deep. Now the Timothy is, uh, roots are only about two inches deep. So we're going to get the shortest aerometer and least expensive aerometer we can get locally, which is a six inch aerometer for a little under a hundred dollars. And we're going to try it out. We are going to continue to video here using our inexpensive video cameras. I have two just in case one doesn't work. I have another one to grab in a moment. We are going to observe uh, whether or not the buttercup, for example, comes back once we start watering. We are in a severe drought here in California. Uh, this is Santa Cruz, West Santa Cruz. And so far the buttercup hasn't come back, but the birds were eating the cover crop seeds that we put here, which is just a grass mix seed. So we spread some shavings. Not enough, but some. And uh, we are, in the next uh, week or two, going to be hooking up this irrigation, putting it on a timer, and observing the method that Shadrach Farms is using to organically grow Timothy hay. And elsewhere on this five-acre property, we are organically growing carrots. So we're going to monitor as we have in years past and then as soon as we can buy or lease a larger plot like uh, several acres, if we're successful here, we're going to expand on the roadmap to profitability because I know that Timothy Hay, organic Timothy Hay in particular, is difficult to get in California. And we will have a market and we'll be able to document the market. I've already asked my local feed store and they said they've never been able to get it and they know they have clients who would like to buy it. That's the plan. It is early April 2014 and this is Sonia Sokolo, the Urban Cowgirl. This message was included with the aerometer packing slip. I must uh, find out how to get this service unit if it's necessary for just one aerometer which I would like to use in my test site for Timothy Hay. I will call 951-689-1701 to find out from the company. Well, today is August 27th, um, and all of the grass seed that I planted here about three weeks ago is coming up. It's a, it's a cover crop for now, um, but we haven't even... Uh, installed the hoses into our irrigation PVC system and the ground on top looks dry and yet the grass is coming up so it must be uh, kind of wet under the surface. Now I kind of want to know what's happening under the surface without digging down, without doing soil sampling etc. So I mentioned that I am going to buy an aerometer and uh, here it is. It came in uh, UPS delivery a couple days ago and it has a gauge 
it has a tip that has to be uh, under the soil top, um, but I'm kind of not clear on how to install it because along with the packing slip there were some instructions about getting some kind of a kit which wasn't mentioned to me prior uh, and uh, I've uh, written the instructions that were on the packing slip uh, in a uh, label here on this video and uh, this week uh, during the weekday I'm gonna try to reach the company to find out if in fact I need it for just one aerometer. Uh, the man who suggested aerometer to me when I told him what I was trying to do here as a beginning farmer uh, with the intention of planting this site with organic Timothy hay uh, said he thought this aerometer would do the trick. He has many aerometers and he uses his aerometers um, with some kind of computer system. I'm uh, a beginning farmer. I'm trying to document an educational video series for other beginning farmers who may want to do uh, these things that I'm doing, uh, especially in California where we're having a serious drought, a uh, very serious drought. And this aerometer should be able to help me to determine whether or not Indeed, I need to add more irrigation, which I'd rather not do. I do have a good well, but uh, we're all trying to conserve here, at least for this year, uh, since the drought was so bad this year, 2014. Uh, so I'm um, documenting the next step. The next step for me to sum up is to figure out how to install this aerometer, which a brief reading of the instructions that I found online is uh, use a half inch uh, metal pipe to make the hole, install the aerometer. Uh, I bought two extra tips because if the tips happen to get dry, I'm told that they will not function well. So educationally speaking, one small step at a time, I'll let you know whoever's trying to learn from this video series, I'll let you know uh, whether or not the aerometer is going to work for me in this particular application of growing at a small test site about a thousand square feet in West Santa Cruz, a uh, organic Timothy Hay field. Uh, recall that uh, months ago I had a bunch of uh, weeds coming up here in this yard. First it was just all soil, bare of weeds, then the buttercup came up uh, everywhere. So we uh, weed whacked the buttercup, a rototilled about three inches, um, planted this cover crop of a mixed pasture seed, uh, are observing as we head into summer uh, What's happening to the soil? What's happening to the cover crop? Uh, trying to get ready to know uh, how much water we will want to use and we um, will hopefully use the serometer to do it and then in the uh, probably late summer, August or September, plant the Timothy Hay seed here and be ready to watch it sprout. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com